Welcome back to segment two of Alternative Education in the Crosshairs. I have with me on my right, and on my left, Kristen Lombard from Wisconsin, and I'm Mary Black from the state of Indiana. And we are going to discuss the data mining debacle in this segment. And to give you a visual of what this looks like, I, I present this slide. Um, children are sadly, and, and their parents, I can't forget their parents, are getting so swallowed up in, in the point and the purpose of education now, which has shifted to gathering all of this data, the, the business influence in education, because that is um, how they run business, and they have shifted this. In my 43 years, I saw the shift um, from true education to schools becoming a business. And um, from there, I'm going to um, have Kirsten Lombard um, address further how all of these things are coming from one pot. Right, so um, what we've seen really is that there is a, a constant rebranding of all of this bad stuff. As soon as parents start to figure it out, they change the name, they, they, they give it a little bit of a splash of paint or something so that it all looks a little bit different, sounds a little bit different, but really underneath it's all the same thing. And I think that you know this slide really speaks to that well, that uh, there's a lot of fish <laughs> in the same pot that are really all the same thing. Um, and all of this data, as we, we mentioned, is dry driving some, some pretty um, uh, corrupt um, programs, some pretty corrupt initiatives. Um, but data really has become what I would call the new currency. Um, we see we see this uh, on the internet. You know, people, all sorts of different companies want your data. How what you're looking at on the the web, what kinds of purchases you're making, etc. Well, translate that into education and all these data points that are being collected on children, and you have this um, situation in which there's hordes and hordes and hordes of data being collected, and all sorts of things that can be done with it, uh, money that can be made from it, uh, workers that can be developed from it. It this is the new currency and there I think p parents need to think about it both in direct terms in terms of the, the money that can be derived from their children's data from their data which is going to into these pots and pools from uh, through their children uh, through the testing that they're doing the in-class assignments etc um, and all sorts of other means actually longitudinal studies you name it um, so so there's profit to be made from that through products that can be developed for the classroom through direct sales and marketing to children in the classroom, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but there's also, there's also an indirect right. way of, of getting at this, and that is in the form of career tracking and preparing workers right. um, and citizens for the future. I just so. wanted to add, when you were talking about the selling of data, to put it for those number crunchers out there, we're talking in excess of $20 billion. So the reason why we're seeing a shift not only in our traditional classrooms, but now in our, our alternative education is because those in alternative education have lots of money to spend on curriculum. And if they have lots of money to spend on curriculum and they go, they have to be mandated with the assessments, there's the data. So your child's data in an alternative education setting is just as saleable as, as those in the traditional system. So we're talking big, big numbers. And I think uh, then we also need to move into something. Um, we need to look. We already talked about the fact that there are word games being played, right? right? right. Um, so here's another word game that's being played. Um, there is something called personalized learning. Oh, um, this is yes. a term that gets thrown around a lot. Yes. Um, and if we could um, see the definition of that um, on the screen, that would be fantastic. Um, so personalized learning. Our understood definition of that is specialized personal attention exactly. uh, from teachers or tailored academics right. designed for unique individuals individual students, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the hidden definition of personalized learning is in personal machining via computer or artificial intelligence-driven learning that leverages student data to drive all students 
to the same goals, not individualized right. goals, but right. to the same, same goals. goals. Exactly. <laughs> right. And and I think it's really important too that we mention yes. this is going back to what we talked about in the last segment. This is not just for the public school classroom oh, anymore. Not. The goal is that all students, that nobody escapes the sieve, right? right? Um, right. That that we're gathering data, we're doing personalized learning for all students. Exactly. So and if we're in alternative education, uh, a lot of our states say, yes, you have to be assessed. Well, you have to use a nationally normed assess or a state assigned assessment. If you go back to the, the big graphic that we saw earlier where you had the ACT company in there, they're driving a lot of these assessments that are geared not for academic personalized learning, but for the skill workforce based competencies. Correct. And, and talking about um, currency, there's big money to be made from developing these personalized learning programs. Absolutely. And even these big tests that, that our right. students are required to take are earning these companies huge amounts of right. money. Right. I, right. I bring to mind uh, Pearson, right. Hoatland, Mifflin, Harcourt. Right. Absolutely. Right. And uh, Absolutely. don't forget, though, it's, it's, it's not just our students, the teachers, sure. the school leaders. Yes. Yes. Digital badging, I believe, is what it's called, isn't it, Kirsten? Um, absolutely. Digital badging yes. is, uh, we're, oh, again, we're going back and talking a little bit about uh, a competency-based right. education or skills-based education again. Right. But this is this is the goal, is to basically ensure that you can't do anything unless you've got a did, the, the proper digital badge. Or the proper credential. Pr pr yes. Precisely. And so. I think over and over again, in, and the many times that I have spoken um, and had the opportunity to talk with teachers around the country, mm -hmm. um, they're no longer considered teachers, they're facilitators. Right. facilitators. And mm -hmm. a true education uh, emanates from the educator mm -hmm. to pass on the accumulated knowledge to the students. And if we're just, if we're now relegating them to facilitators, they have very little say so um, in, in their own classrooms. Right. Right. And I think it, it's so important for uh, homeschool and private school parents to hear this because if all means all, and if classroom teachers in public schools have largely become nothing but facilitators, well, then you can be sure that the aim is, mm -hmm. and we are seeing this more and more, uh, that parents are marginalized, and we're going to talk about that more in another segment, right. but that parents become facilitators in their own children's education and so as well. To Nothing that more than that. homeschool mom or that homeschool dad who's not badged or credentialed, are they no longer going to be able to homeschool their children in the way that, that suits their family? This is a huge question that we should be absolutely pursuing state by state. What is, what is written into the ESSA as far as teachers is that teachers and school leaders will have to be groomed and professionally developed so that they teach all in one way. Yes. And, and I know that um, there are lesson plans that are now available and many school districts are now using it that um, all fifth grade teachers in that school district are printing off the lesson plans for the next day so that they're all mm -hmm. teaching the same thing and that was the original purpose of, of Common Core. Sure. Right. And let me just point out one small uh, example. Back in 2013 in the state of North Carolina, we had a long-standing definition of homeschooling that was rewritten. And one representative in the state house put it this way. It was to purposely blur the lines between public and private education, which in North Carolina homeschooling is a bona fide um, part of private education when you register your homeschool with the state. So what is that saying? Why would I want to blur a line between home education and traditional education? Because after all, why did I choose to homeschool? I didn't want to be in the system. So when you have state laws that are erasing those lines that protect our home educators or our private educators, because not all private education is homeschooling, uh, that's another area that we need to, as parents, need to be looking out for. What's going on that is erasing that, that line, of that hedge of protection? 
We have a slide, Yes, Lynn. we do. That I think illustrates your point beautifully. And I don't think many people are aware of, of the involvement of so much government. And explain this to us, okay. would you? Well, thank you. Um, yes, most people, when they hear uh, Every Student uh, Succeeds Act, you naturally think of the U.S. Department of Education. But the U.S. Department of Education shares its data most importantly with the U.S. Department of Labor, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, which in ESSA are given much more power than they should ever, ever have. But you also have these other agencies like your Department of Agriculture, your Department of Commerce, um, you have your Department of Housing and Urban Development. All these federal agencies that you see data mine and more and, and more. more absolutely <laughs> and so more you mentioned we were talking yesterday yes, and you mentioned yes. to me the veterans administration yes the veterans and administration there are so these are just the the main ones that we could get to to put them together in a slide these all data mine data share with the department of education labor and health and, and human just services in the federal government that's within the federal government now take into consideration each one of these federal agencies has uh, third-party data companies they work with. So once your child's data or your young adult's data or your data is released, it's gone uh, uh, worldwide. There's, there's no doubt about it. Every one of these agencies is up to its neck in the Every Student Succeeds Act and the federal overreach into education. And we know that our Constitution does not give the federal government that right. Now, let me point out to you, um, and let's see, yes, with that slide, that in the Every Student Succeeds Act on page 17, and you can also find it in the conference report as well on page 33, all education must be aligned with the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act's industry-based credentialed standards. Yes, absolutely. Let me just, um, and sure. sort of very quick point here. Mm -hmm. All of these large pieces of legislation, federal legislation, are designed to fit together like gears. Exactly. They interact, they mention each other over and over oh, and yes, over they again. Yeah. Um, they, they interlock like gears and they are meant to do so. Exactly. That's why um, in all the writing that I've done on my blog and in, in speaking and everywhere, I've termed it as a common core machine because it's not just common core. It's not just uh, the, the private entities that are involved in it. It's also very much our government and it's up to its neck. Now, let me point out that you see all these particular agencies. All right. The U.S. Department of Labor we know is responsible for the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. Now here, and this is going to go back to the data mining, okay, those 400 points I think have now been increased to 800. What we had happen was the states were incentivized much like they were with Race to the Top, only it was for the Workforce Quality Data Initiative. And so each state was supposed to com compete to get funds to create this workforce data tracking system. So I have the student longitudinal data system that's coming up from the Department of Education. I now have the workforce quality development initiative going on from the U.S. Department of Labor. And the sole purpose is to bridge it so it's an endless stream of data that bases itself off of the career track, the career uh, tech education, the career pathways. I know we've heard each one of these terms in our state. That's the hidden behind the, the, those two separate data initiatives. And yeah. you can find out how it's going to impact you in your home, especially if you're in alternative education, in section 9210 of ESSA through the uh, Institute of Educational Sciences in-home assessment for how connected to the internet your home is because as ESSA puts it, no student should have any excuse to not be hooked into 24-7, 365 day educational resources. And I think we can to uh, connect as well the Affordable Care Act which under the um, maternal care portion of it uh, demands um, mandated investigation 
intervention um, by the Department of, of Health and um, Human Services for um, things such as poverty, low birth rate, mm -hmm. military, and, um, and this all leads to, as you were saying, to uh, intrusion into the home. And Absolutely. that doesn't mean public school, no. private school students. No. That means every, every student. Every student. And I, I think it's, it's important that we note, I, there, there are none, none of us sitting here um, are interested in it, like curtailing services for anybody. We all want to see the right things happen for, for people. But what we want to, to make very clear is that there are strings attached uh, to all this money, to all these services, so that as they, they are implemented, um, they're act, they actually become not services, but chains exactly. or intrusions. Right. And so that, that's the difficulty. Right, and, and you see your freedom slowly being taken away. Promoted. Yes, yeah. exactly. Let's look at the next slide. And, and see how we got to where we are. And it, it's like a, a set of stairs. We started with Goals 2000. Uh, we went then to No Child Left Behind. Um, from there, we went to Race to the Top. Uh, we can't forget the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. And if you notice that that was um, a reauthorized Workforce mm -hmm. Innovation Actually, Act, Act. Yeah. and then uh, we have now Every Student Succeeds Act, which um, reauthorized ESS, ESEA which uh, back in 1965, the Elementary and Secondary, Secondary Education Act can't, can't. that got the federal government involved in, in education yeah. in yeah. the first place. And let's, let's, let's make no mistake, it has been popular rhetoric that ESSA fixed No Child Left Behind. It did not fix it, it did not replace it, it codified it. A exactly. And, and as you said, supposedly it replaced No Child Left Behind. It but it is, I think all three of us would agree, that it is No Child Left Behind. That's it is lines. everything yes. um, magnified, um, you know, yes. on steroids, as, right. as we're, right. we're want to say. Let's go back to the stairs. Uh, and then we have the Higher Education Act, which is bringing it into this career tracking mm -hmm. and all of this mm -hmm. into the higher education. Yes, college and, university. Yep. and we land at the top of the stairs with the global mm -hmm. workforce development, yep. citizens of the world, which exactly. is the so purpose of all of this career tracking, this mm -hmm. data collecting is what does your data say um, about you fitting into How the global, global society. Citizen are you? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, let me point out though, as far as the Higher Education Act, ladies and gentlemen, it is the last education related federal law to be streamlined in this cradle to grave initiative. Now it's already got a lot in it and it was last reauthorized in 2008. The same people who uh, wrote the Every Student Succeeds Act are currently rewriting the Higher Education Act. And here's what we need to understand for alternative education. A lot of our homeschooled students enter the Higher Education Act's territory upon dual enrollment, concurrent enrollment, uh, early, com uh, uh, early college promise programs, uh, apprenticeships, things like that. Every one of our community colleges throughout the United States has already jumped into this common core style of learning. So once our, our, our children who grow up and want to, you know, leave home, homeschooling, um, alternative education, they jump into community college because it makes a whole lot of sense they're jumping right into this system. And every one of our, our states has uh, a board for higher education. So it's not just college, it's not just university, it's your, your, your trade schools, your, your um, alternative uh, work schools that are popping up now. I can't remember the exact term that they're using. Um, but apprenticeship it, perhaps? Yes, yes, and, and it's, it's, it's as, as you said, Kirsten, it's those cogs that are just mm -hmm. falling into place. Right. Yes, right. exactly. 
Uh, let's go, uh, Kirsten, to the next slide. Yes. And I know you would like to address this and <laughs> give a little story behind. I this. would. Um, well, in 1994, uh, the Clintons, uh, under, under the Clinton administration, there was uh, created an office of uh, school to work. And J.D. Hoy was the person that they chose to head that office up. And she was interviewed for a regional newsletter um, the following year. Uh, not long after having been appointed to this position. And uh, they were asking her about uh, testing and, and basically data collection mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. and, and career tracking issues. And, um, and she finished, uh, almost finished the uh, interview by saying, um, our issue is it's for all kids and all means all, all does not mean some. Exactly. And when she, the, the, the reporter who was interviewing her asked her, well, but what about private school kids and homeschool kids who are really outside of the system? Mm -hmm. She reemphasized, she said, we're serious, all means all. So my question uh, in ending this segment would be to ask parents, did you know if you're a private, the parent of a private uh, school child or the parent of a homeschooled child, did you know that all means all? And do you realize how quickly this is coming at you and how many angles it's coming at you from? Thank you, ladies, for all of your information in this segment, uh, the data mining debacle. Uh, I don't think we've left uh, much to doubt that it is indeed a debacle. And uh, to echo your words, they mean it when they say all means all. If you enjoyed this video and all of our videos, please consider a tax-deductible donation so we can keep the whole thing free for you. I'm Dr. Duke. Thanks for watching.